Behold Divine Symmetry. Created by Govi. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to our video. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. It's Patrick from Vicious Computers and welcome to a brand new guide and video. So today, actually, I have two videos I wanna bring you, kinda of quick short videos. And instead of putting up two separate videos, since they're close enough in relationship, we'll put them both together. One video is gonna be a guide, a tutorial on these Govi prism lights. I've already showed a couple of small videos on how I upgraded the power supply and replaced the controller with WLED. I had a warning video about the power supply being inadequate. It comes with an 82 watt power supply. I hooked up a 180 watt power supply and maxed out my 180 watt power supply, which means the included power supply was inadequate. So you would think, well, let me go buy a new bigger power supply. And I wanna just kind of caution you that I'm not saying don't do it because I did it and I'm going to continue doing it, but I'm gonna show you a potential problem because as I finished installing these lights onto the house, these three lights in front of us are my leftovers. I cut this last segment off from my upper gables and I actually got to tear these apart and see what's inside of them. And that gave me yet another thing I'm kind of worried about. So I wanna share that with you today. The other part of the video is actually a guide because I do frequent the Facebook and the Reddit groups for Govi. The most common complaint I see for the prisms is that they're just too busy. People don't like the fact that they're used to the typical pro lights or the elite lights where you have one color per LED package and it just kind of gives you solid colors on your wall. And then especially when you do transitional effects like a chase, they want one light per color. It looks clean to them. And then the prisms have more of a fade because you have three LEDs in each one of the segments. But the guide that I'm gonna show you today is if you transition over to WLED, there's actually a lot of control there and you can use the prisms in the exact same way you would use the LEDs from um, the elites or the pros and you won't get the mixed colors. So I'm gonna show you that. So first things first, the PSA, winter is coming and that means influencers are getting spammed by marketing partners to sell you stuff. So Govi and Amazon and you name it, they're sending out either free products, links, they're enticing these people to sell you stuff. And I'm not gonna to try to be mean about it, but most of these influencers care more about the money they're gonna make over what they're selling you. I'm old school. I review things to tell you what they are and what the truth is behind those things. And so I've already revealed the power supply was an issue. So today I have another issue to also show you. So it's weird that I'm gonna be putting a guide in the same video that I'm like downgrading the product. <laughs> and doesn't make sense to some people, but to me it does. I want you to know the truth behind everything and you can make your own educated decisions on where you wanna spend your money. So Gobi, let's face it, they're made in China. They're actually not an expensive brand. They sell their stuff for a lot of money, yes. Over the years they keep going up and up and up in price, but they're not the same as a premium, um, all-American in-house installer grade where it's gonna cost you a lot more money and you're gonna get better stuff for your money. But let's face it, most of us aren't gonna spend eight to $10,000 getting lights installed at our house. Govi is kind of the easy way to go. So, all right, let's start with the, the word of warning. So if you didn't already see my old video, like I said, 80 watt power supply got easily maxed out. I upgraded to a 180 watt power supply, maxed it out. We know these LEDs can use a lot more power than what they're getting, which means you're paying more for them than what you're getting out of them. Now that I cut this three light section off of my gable, I had to actually strip back the wire to hook it up to the controller. So no more am I using one of the Govi splices and just plugging it in because there's no end to plug into. So we had to go raw wire. So I thought this would be a good way to show you how you would hook this up if you don't have a splice or you don't want to use a splice. And basically once you strip your wire, it's just a small flat piece of cable with three wires inside of it. On your far left and far right side is your blue and your red. And that's your blue is your negative, your red is your hot. 
and then your yellow cable in the middle, that's your data. So what I've done here is I got 36 volts coming from a power supply, coming to this distribution block, and I'm dropping 36 volts down to five volts using this buck converter, which is powering my controller. And then I got the 36 volts going directly to the LED strand to power it. And that's kind of the setup here. The first word, word of warning that I wanted to share with you all is that I am very, very disappointed with these, these power wires. I have the sheathing on them, so not just the copper, it is stranded, so if it was solid, I would actually strip it and measure it directly. But I'm looking at about 1.2 to 1.3 millimeters for that wire with the protective sheathing on it, which means that probably is about a 26 gauge wire. 26 gauge wire, and then the words of Chris, who commented on one of my videos, Chris Maher, if I said his last name right, can only handle about three amps, and then it's gonna go up in flames. If we do the math, 36 volts at three amps is just over 80 watts of power. Now it all kind of makes sense. They give you a cut down power supply because they give you cut down power cables because they have to set up this system so that it doesn't go up in flames. But instead of upgrading the whole system to be at its maximum performance, they downgraded everything to be cheap. And then instead of spending a little bit more money to upgrade and give you the best product on the market, they would rather just give you a free replacement. They figure it's cheaper to them to send you free replacements when this stuff goes belly up because you should never run your power supply at 100%, which is what's going to happen with these on many settings. And then, of course, if you upgrade your power supply like me, then you do run the risk of actually causing a fire or a burnout on the wire itself if you don't limit the current. So either installing fuses or use WLED's built-in current limiting function. Both of those should be able to work for you. So warnings aside, the other part of this video is the guide. So I frequent the Facebook groups and the Reddit groups. And like I said, people complain about how busy these lights are because they have three different LEDs inside of them. And when you do transitional effects, sometimes it just doesn't look the way that they want it to. So let's go to the phone where I have the controls for these currently. And I'm gonna teach you a little bit about the configuration inside of WLED. So again, it's pretty simple, blue for negative, red for positive, yellow for data. On any LED controller, you're gonna have a data, which is usually GPIO 16 on these more modern controllers. And we're working with 36 volts. If we go into the configuration for WLED, I just wanna show you that the setup is SM16825 RGBCW with GRB. GPIO 16, and I've got nine LEDs. That's pretty simple. Now we go over to the segments. This is where the magic actually happens. So I'm gonna go to my presets. I'm gonna change this to one segment real quick, and we'll start with the most basic out of the box setup. One segment means that if we look at how I've got these LEDs set up right now, we're starting at LED zero, we're ending at LED nine, and they're all in a row. So it's gonna be LED one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we do a simple effect right now, like a chase, you'll see that it moves across the LEDs. If you add another color, like say we add blue, this is where people said, I don't like the prisms, they're too busy. Because if this was installed on the house, you would see the red and the blue blending in between the lights. I personally like this effect, I think it looks good. Some people find it not so good. And so they don't buy these lights, they buy the elites or the pros. So the purpose of this part of the video is to show you, don't dismiss these prism lights just because you don't like the busy effects because there's other ways to fix this. So let's go back to our presets. Let's go ahead and do the three LED group. Let's go look at our segments again and I'll show you what I changed. On the three LED group, we're still starting and ending at zero and nine, but now I'm grouping every three LEDs together. You can see where it says grouping three. So th that means we have three virtual LEDs. So that means if we do an effect now, such as a chase, you'll see it affects all three lights together. If we were to add in another color, 
you'll see that it actually performs exactly the way you would expect it to perform with the elites and the pros. So this is basically an easy configuration to change the prism lights to look just like the pros and the elites. But I wanna show you one more thing they have up their sleeve, which I think makes them really, really cool. This is what I did for Veterans Day. I created one called Three Way Split. And let me show you what we did here. This is the first time I actually created multiple segments. And what I did here was I said start at zero, end at nine, but spacing, not grouping, but spacing. So I'm saying take my first light and then skip two, and then take my third light and then skip two, and then take, so that's how that's working. If I go down to the next segment, I change the offset, which means I want you to start at LED one instead of starting at LED zero, but then do the same thing, skip every two. And then the last one says offset two. So what does that look like in practice? What does that actually mean? It'll make so much more sense when I actually show you. So we've got all of them set to red right now. Let's deselect LED one and deselect LED three. And let's just choose LED two. Let's go to solid and let's change the color from red to white. Go back to the segments, choose just the third one, and change it from red to blue. And this is how I did my Veterans Day look. Just red, white, and blue. Something you definitely could not do with the pros and the elites is have all three of those colors present on just one light module. And it puts off a really cool effect. And then again, because WLED is so powerful, you know, even though we just chose red, white, and blue, and we have these broken into segments, we could chase this whole thing. I can just go back in here and say, okay, I want to make this a chase. And now you get this red, white, and blue chase. It's like, it's that simple. So that's what I wanted to show you. A guide on how configurable these lights are under WLED and how to hook them up. A forewarning about the undersized power supply. A forewarning about the undergaged wire. I'm calling out Gobi for being cheap Chinese stuff. They need to upgrade their equipment with how much they're charging us, nearly $1,000, go on Amazon right now and look up at how much 400 feet of 20 gauge wire will cost you. This is 26 gauge, 20 gauge would be adequate. Go look up how much 400 feet of 20 gauge wire would cost you, and then now compare that to how much you pay for these lights and tell me that Gobi is not being cheap. And then last thing is just that PSA that yes, it's Black Friday, it's Christmas, it's all of this stuff. Remember, I'm here on YouTube as an educator, not as a profiteer. I might make a few bucks on affiliate links if you buy something from Amazon, but I really don't make much money on uh, YouTube at all. So my incentive is not the money. My incentive is to teach you the things that nobody else will show you. So once again, this is Patrick from Vicious Computers. I hope everyone's having a wonderful time, and I'll see you in the next video.